No introduction. Um, Alan Brown was the president and CEO of the Open Group for 17 years until very, very recently. Um, and Alan has spent the last three months plus um, focused on the Association of Enterprise Architects and one of the first initiatives there that he's bringing to that is the use of open badges for professional development. So you'll have seen flyers about open badges here today and the ability to get a badge for attending this event, uh, speaking at this event. Um, Alan's going to explain a bit more about the program and how that works and I think it's going to be a, a somewhat of a repeat or at least a refresh uh, at the Partner Pavilion this evening. So last word from me is remember do come along to the Partner Pavilion this evening, 5.45 start. You'll hear some interesting stuff there um, and have the opportunity to uh, have, some, have some drinks and, uh, and network with those here. So um, that's it for me this morning. But Alan, if I could ask you to uh, educate us about open badges and professional development. Thank you very much. Yes, very pleased to do so. And congratulations on a really good conference as well. So, yeah, I'm very proud and privileged to be able to announce the launch of the AEA Open Badge Program for Professional Development, as Steve says, and tell you a little bit about it. I've got my prop. I'll come back to that later. How many people are already aware before coming here of Open Badges? Ooh, not so much. Now share what I've gleaned. Now, some of the credentials or certificates that you have and have gained over the years and where you keep them. The, these two are, are two of mine. Um, I, it took me a long time to find them. They were tucked away in a bookshelf, um, not facing outwards. Uh, I know that some people have them on walls in their offices and homes, some in closets amongst their shoes. Uh, but the, they have a number of drawbacks, one of which is if they're stuck on my bookshelf, no one really gets to see them. And if they did, they'd have to come to my house and they're physical objects and it's, that's quite difficult. The other issue with these kind of certificates or credentials is that they're very monolithic. It tells you that I've qualified as an accountant or I've spent time at the London Business School. It doesn't actually tell you what I learned during the training process of the accounting process, there's, there's parts that you learn, parts that you don't learn. It doesn't tell you that, and it doesn't tell you what you learned at, at business school. So what a lot of people have been thinking about is going back to uh, the ability to display things in a more granular form. And what they've done is they've gone back to the, what the scouting movement does. Right? And what the scouting movement does is give you a badge for everything that you've achieved and every skill that you've managed to master and every exam that you've passed. So whether it's camping, skiing, hiking, cookery, drama, photography, astronomy, there's a badge for it. And you can put it on a sleeve or a sash and you can display it to anyone that wants to see. And that's great because you can see the actual skills they've got at a granular form. What it doesn't do though, it doesn't overcome the fact that they are still physical badges. So short of going around the world like this, not many people are going to see those badges, right? So people have been thinking in terms of how do we make this digital? Now I'm sure that many of you are familiar with that badge. How many people are a mayor of somewhere? Any mayors here? There's a few mayors, okay. So there's those kind of digital badges that you can share everywhere. And there's not an awful lot of evidence to say you've really done that. Okay, I, I went and stood outside a coffee shop and I pressed a button, I got a, a badge, which is great. But it's not really robust and strong and full of evidence. So what um, the Mozilla Foundation have done is they've thought about it in a way that provides some credential of a skill or an achievement or something learned. Right. And they put together some infrastructure and they put together in their terms some standards for you to build a platform on which to give out digital badges. 
With digital badges, you can then promote them uh, through your social media or, or anywhere else. So I want to run through what a, a digital badge is, incoming technology. Thank you. Let me run through the, um, well, the anatomy of a badge. So what is an open badge? What is a digital badge, right? It's basically an image file. It's a PNG file. And inside that is what I would call information. You guys might call it metadata. You know, I call it information. And that information is stored in a JSON file and it's all meshed together in what they call badge baking. Now, badge baking, they've used that term because once you've put all that information in and you've produced the badge, it's very much like baking a cake which is that you put all the ingredients in, you mix them up, and then you bake the cake, and you cannot then take those ingredients out. It's there forever, right? And that information, it'll have a badge name and description. It'll have the criteria that the person that earned the badge had to pass, had to achieve, or had to demonstrate in order to get that badge. The issuer, in this case, will be the AEA. The evidence that that person actually did that and the date issued. Now, the date issued is important in some cases, like first aid or CPR, where there's an expiration date. So it can show the expiration date. And if a badge expires, it doesn't disappear. It just shows that it's expired. And then there's some standards and tax. And with the concept of open badges, there is also this concept of a backpack. Voila backpack. We have two models to demonstrate outside. And the idea is that the backpack is where your, your um, badges are initially kept, or always kept. Right? Ooh. And the AEA to this week is, in the, is going to be capable of issuing three badges. It's our first start and we are issuing badges for conference attendee, conference speaker, and for a TOGAF user group attendee. So if you are here, it doesn't matter whether you're, you, you don't have to be a member of the AEA. Anyone that's attended this can claim their attendee badge or their speaker badge, or their attendee badge and their speaker badge, or their TOGAF user group badge if they've been to the TOGAF user group, or all three. Now, once you have your badges, then you can decide where you can share them. And you can decide if you're going to share them and where you're going to share them. So you could share them in LinkedIn. So far, I've worked out how to share it on my news feed, but I haven't quite worked out how to get it onto my profile. You can share it on your personal blog and, and other places. So there's ways of sharing these so that, unlike the physical objects, you can share these digital badges in a way that everyone can see what your skills and achievements are. Now, one badge doesn't tell you an awful lot about a person. It tells you that they have attended an event. Doesn't tell you much because they might never have attended another event. But if you start collecting a few, this starts to show that that person is someone that is interested in developing in understanding more about what they're doing around these subjects. It could be that there are badges offered for other things. It could be a forum chair, a track organiser. It could be for someone that contributes to the JEA, writes an article. It could be someone that does a webinar for the AEA. Any of those kind of things initially would build up. And as you get more and more, you can start to see more of this person, you can see that this is a contributor, someone that's learning but also sharing, someone that's capable of being a valued person to work with. And it starts to build a, a pretty decent picture. Now, badges are what they call stackable. Right? And what that means is that you can have a number of badges that then build up to a larger one. Now, my analogy for that is Monopoly. Okay, so you get a number of badges that are like houses, and once you've got sufficient houses on a property, then you can have a hotel. So they're, they're, the smaller badges can build up 
to something bigger. But the, the problem is that we're starting off with a few badges for conference attendees and so on. And, and if we just sort of have a ramshackle set of badges, it doesn't really mean anything to anyone. And it's difficult to understand or to understand what that picture of that person is, a, apart from being you know, a regular contributor. So what's happening in the background is that the AEA is working with the open group and in particular, the board work group responsible for the open certified architect, certified IT specialist, and so on. In breaking down those monolithic standards, those monolithic certifications, because if you know about open certified architect, open CA, it is very monolithic. You don't know if you're going to be able to do it or how to get there until you've actually got there, and then you can sort of claim the certification. Wouldn't it be great if we could actually see all of the parts and pieces that you need to achieve? Wouldn't it be great if you can actually build a career path by understanding? Now, right now, we don't actually know how all of this is going to be achieved. How would you provide the evidence that someone has these soft skills, has the mentoring skills, has achieved other criteria? We need to work all of that out. But first of all, we need to break it down into the parts and pieces. And that provides a much more dynamic program, because with a monolithic program, it's very difficult to change. Once we have it into a set of badges, we can add a badge, we can modify a badge without disrupting the, the entire program. The other part of this, as you can see, is I've broken it down into four steps along the way from left to right. And this is an analogous to the accounting profession that I'm familiar with, which is that there are some badges you would need to earn in order to qualify to enter as a student. There are then some badges that put together provide a collection that when you've achieved all of those, you are at the intermediate level. Now, in the accounting world, people that are hiring understand what it is to hire someone that is part qualified to intermediate level. It means something. But if they've just passed this exam and that exam and that exam, and it doesn't add up to anything, it doesn't mean anything at all. So they're looking for intermediate level. Then the associate level is for a fully qualified accountant. And people can then advertise in job ads for part qualified or newly qualified, post-qualified, five years with our industry experience. If you look at current job ads for enterprise architects, there's a whole list of technology stuff. Whereas, wouldn't it be great if we could just say, are you a qualified enterprise architect? Right? From a recognized body. And then you go on to the fellow level, which is with experience. Right? So that's where we'd like to go in the future and also then to creep into the IT specialist world and into some of the others. To claim a badge, it's as simple as sending an email to openbadges at globalaea.org. Hopefully you saw this flyer at the registration. You can also just walk across the, to the AEA exhibit table and ask them for a badge. Once you've registered for a badge or walked over there and, and entered your details or sent them an email and they've got your details, then you can claim a backpack. And as I said, there are two different styles. There's that style and one that's more of a messenger purse, I think people call it, handbag type thing. If you need more information, please ask us. We're around. We're going to redo this at the pavilion and hopefully do it better because we've learned something. Uh, you can always visit the website at globalaea.org, and if you go there, you'll see one of the tabs is AEA, AEA Open Badges. If you go to that tab, it will then start giving you some information about the program, about how to share your badge, uh, some FAQs and support. So hopefully that's given you some idea about what Open Badges are, what we're trying to do with the AEA. And finally, I'd like to please ask you, go claim your badges make them visible, support the program, and I'd like to thank you all for your attention and support for this. Thanks.